Hello and welcome to our worship for this Pentecost Sunday. My name's Jo Neary, I'm the team vicar in the Bemidster team and our liturgy today reflects both Pentecost and the Platinum Jubilee of the Queen. It's been half term this week which basically means it's rained uh, but other than that I hope that as we prepare for the Jubilee weekend and there's so much going on I wonder if there is much bunting and flags up where you live um, but we're looking forward to many uh, community celebrations in all our villages across the Bemminster team and across the country, of course. And we look forward to them and hope perhaps that the weather perks up and we may be a little warmer and a little drier. Our contributors to worship today are Fiona, Angie and Peter. Let's prepare to worship God. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill us. Come, Lord of life, come. Come and fill us. Come, wind of heaven, come. Come and fill us. Come, flame of love, come. Come and fill us. Come, giver of all gifts, come, come and fill us. We sing our hymn. <laughs>
we come to the time of confession and penitence. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We pray, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray first the prayer for collect prayer for Pentecost. Let us pray. Holy Spirit sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire, strengthen your children with the gift of faith, revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect prayer for the Queen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the reign of your servant Elizabeth our Queen and for the example of loving and faithful service which she has shown among us. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We listen to our reading. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. The Coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fiona leads us in a reflection on today's reading. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I love listening to languages. French, German, Greek, Japanese, Korean, Hebrew, Welsh and many more. Communication is so important today. You just have to look at our phones to see the many different social media apps we use, all the many different television news stations we listen to, to know it's important. In today's reading from Acts chapter 2, Luke tells us that all were together in Jerusalem in one place. It has been 50 days since Passover, known as Pentecost, which is simply a Greek word for 50th. It has its roots in the Jewish Feast of Weeks. So this event took place in late spring. Many people would be in Jerusalem and worshipping at the temple. You know, if I could go back in time to an event, this is the one event which I would love to witness. This day of Pentecost was and is one of the most important days in the world's history. You see, we would not be here today if it was not for this event. We would probably not have even received the gospel either. It must have been amazing to hear and to see. First hearing the wind in verse 2, it tells us suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. In both the Old and New Testaments, wind is associated with the coming of the Spirit. And so it is here, the sound of a violent wind. For Jesus had told them before he ascended, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and the Spirit empowering is what is about to happen. Luke describes it as the sound like the blowing of a violent wind, but not the wind itself. Then they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So what is God doing here? What's the point? Is God just showing off? No, I don't think so. Because what the Spirit is doing through this miracle becomes clear when they say in verse 11, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. This is when the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples to speak in all tongues to all nations of the world, the wonders of God. The reason for this is because many Jews were on pilgrimage from every nation under heaven and were there to observe the Feast of Weeks. You see, centuries earlier, through various military conquests, the Jews had been dispersed throughout the entire Near East and North Africa and even the Mediterranean world. And they settled down in those many lands. But the religious Jews would still make the trek to Jerusalem for the feast days. 
they may have known some Aramaic, the language of the common Jews. They may have known some Greek, the international language of commerce and culture in that time, Latin or Hebrew. But be coming from many foreign lands, they probably were most at home in the language of the country that they came from. But they were bewildered, amazed and astonished due to the fact they knew the men were Galileans, who were speaking in their own native tongues. That must have blown their minds. It is clear that the Lord wants people from every tribe and language and nation to hear the mighty wonders of God in their own tongue. What God is signalling here in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost is the start of the worldwide mission of the church. The gospel will come to Prygaeans and Cappadocians where the mighty works of God will be told to Germans and Swedes and English men and women. That is why we are here listening today. Many have passed on the good news of God until it has filtered down to each of us in our own native language. Greatly helped in the 1500s by William Tyndale, who translated the first Bible into English. From speaking to believers and non-believers at Pentecost, telling the mighty wonders of God, has echoed through generations of nations, but is still happening today. We are part of it, and by the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit, all of us can help continue sharing the wonders of God with those yet to hear. Amen. We affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to our Lord. With expectant hearts, we come before you today on this Pentecost Sunday with our prayers, our petitions and our hopes for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. With grateful hearts, we stand in your presence and thank you for delivering us safely through so many trials and struggles and dangers. With joyful hearts, we gather together to celebrate and honour Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. Help us, Lord, to keep our hearts hopeful, grateful and joyful. Father, we pray for the work and goodness of your church here in Bemminster and the surrounding towns and villages and wider still across the country, across all denominations and across the world. Let her grow. Let her gain strength and wisdom. Let her love more deeply and share more openly the good news of your salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we pray for our world. Let us still experience joy and wonder in travel and exploration of far off places. Let us not shrink back in fear of poverty or disease, but to live boldly and generously under your promptings to the causes that so desperately need our support. And let us not give up trying to do good and be good, however bad our role models may be, and however fearful we are of our future ability to thrive under the fear of ever-increasing costs of living. Shine your light. Reveal paths of hope and prosperity. 
rescue us from the gloom of despair and despondency. Holy Spirit, lift us, comfort us, fill us. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Help us to see what you see and what others see in us. Free us from the harsh, crippling judgment we place upon ourselves. Separate us from any force that restricts us from being all that you designed us to be. Inspire us with your breath of life and fire of love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we pray for our families. Pour out your spirit upon them. Fill us with loving kindness, patience and peace. Give us wisdom and a discerning spirit that understands when to hold on to our reins of authority when parenting our children and when to allow them space to grow, develop character and independence. Guide us in our marriages. We invite you in to teach us how to live in harmony, respecting our differences and to keep the spark of love alive. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful community-spirited people who give their time, expertise and finances so generously and freely. Bless them abundantly for all that they do to make this little dot on the map of the world such a lovely place to live. And Father, we raise up to you those inspirational people who work with pride and enthusiasm, who go above and beyond their call of duty, working extra hours and staying up late, planning and studying for the good of others. Keep them refreshed and enabled to continue their good work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on those whose lives are limited by poverty, suffering or separation from the fullness of life that is your will for them. May the Holy Spirit come to their aid to be their comfort and to lead them into your holy light. Bless those whose lives have ended as they enter the beauty and wonder of your heavenly kingdom. May they find peace in replace of anxiety, fear, and pain. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We use uh, an act of dedication to remember the Queen at this Jubilee time. As we give thanks for Her Majesty's service to us all, let us dedicate our own lives once again to the love and service of God and neighbour. Lord of our lives and Father of all, grant that our thanksgiving may prove itself in service to you and to our Queen, our country and one another, for your name's sake. Amen. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. 
Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. Enjoy all your Jubilee celebrations. Take care, stay safe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.